Hello, um, my name is Mark Newman, Chief Analyst at TM Forum, uh, and I'm here today to talk with some uh, industry friends and colleagues about one of the most ambitious transformation programmes we've seen in today's telecom sector. But just to introduce those, um, those friends and colleagues, so uh, Manjot Mann is CEO of uh, M1 Singapore. Hello, Manjot. Hi. Nick Woods, CEO of TM Forum. Hi, Nick. And Raja Shah, SVP and Industry Head, Global Markets with Infosys. Hello, Raja. <laughs> so before we dive in, I just wanted to give you just a brief introduction to the Singapore telecoms market, just to understand the scale of what M1 is undertaking. So Singapore country, 6 million people, uh, highly evolved telecoms market and infrastructure. Um, 6 million people, but many more connections. Uh, fast broadband, 4G, 5G in the territory now. Uh, M1, one of the three to four players in, in that telecoms market. Uh, as I say, highly competitive, low prices. Um, and when Manjot Singh arrived in the company uh, in, in 20, end of 2018, undertook an ambitious transformation program. Um, there were some ownership changes in 2019. Very interesting, the arrival of, um, uh, of, of Keppel, which is very big in the shipping industry, giving, giving the company a strong position in B2B. Legacy maybe more around B2C. Um, and then uh, off the back of this transformation program, which took place in 2019, 2020, we've seen in recent weeks, the first fruits of that transformation with some new flexible consumer plans. So um, Manjot, if I can just bring you in, um, it is a really ambitious program. And, uh, and you know, when I look at operators across the world, you, know, you stand out in terms of the level of your ambition. What inspired you to be, to be so ambitious? Um, so Mark, I have been in the industry now for more than two decades, um, and I have seen this industry move from uh, 2G to 5G. Um, and my frustration has always been that apart from talking about speeds that the G could deliver, telecoms had very little else to offer. So over many, many years, um, the most I have seen is telcos reducing their yields as they went along, uh, putting in more capex to deploy networks um, and uh, talk about speeds. Uh, that's about it. And that was very, very frustrating because while if you look at the valuation and market caps of telcos around the world, you will see how they have reduced in over many, many years and continue to do so. Um, and everything and, and anything around telco uh, that did not own the assets actually gained value. Uh, and new business models came around telcos and um, you know, did very, very well. Um, and unicorns were born while telcos continue to suffer. Um, so this was the frustration that really set me thinking that what do we do? Because um, clearly uh, our network assets uh, were not being valued enough. Uh, and uh, the value clearly did not sit in the network assets. Uh, it actually sat in the data that we had. Uh, and therefore, uh, the idea of how do we monetize data uh, that, uh, that telco sit with, uh, we have immense amount of data, which, is, which has been uh, collected over many, many years of operation. Um, but we have never been able to monetize it to the level that we, uh, that we could have. Um, and that is what really drove me to think that ultimately going, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a great advocate of asset light models. Um, you know, when I, when I, when I was in uh, Indonesia, we were the first telco at that time to sell our towers. Um, and we were the first ones to start um, asset sharing in, in, uh, in Indonesia. Uh, so, so, you know, the idea has always been that how do you create an asset light model, but use the data that we have collected over many years of operation and then be able to monetize that data. So that's where the thinking came from. Uh, and, and I think um, um, the reason why most telcos 
uh, are not able to get there uh, is primarily because the infrastructure, the IT infrastructure that they have is a legacy infrastructure. Um, so it takes a lot of effort, time, money, uh, and guts to, uh, to say that, look, whatever we've built for so many years need to now change completely. And we need to go cloud native because being cloud native is, um, is a means to an end. It's not an end itself. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's what prompted me to. So when it came to selling that vision to your shareholders and, and describing that in a clear business language, was it just what you said to us or did you need to explain it slightly differently to your shareholders? Well, look, shareholders look for value uh, at the end of the day. Um, so, in, you know, let me put it in perspective. I think we were a little lucky because we got privatized after we got bought over yeah. by Keppel. So that helps to a certain extent because you are privatized and you don't have to sit in front of analysts and, and shareholders every quarter and, and, you know, look at your numbers. So, because every transformation will go through a bit of a uh, trough when you are going through the going through such a big change, uh, and uh, and therefore um, it was probably a little easier for me in that sense. However, the difficult part was to um, to create that roadmap. Uh, so we actually set out a five-year uh, project for ourselves uh, where we uh, looked at. Um, all, all the elements in the in, in the organization, and not just the not just the IT assets, and not just the network assets, but everything else that needs to change. Right from um, so so, just to give you a perspective, this is a change that we are actually doing from inside out perspective rather than outside in. So we are not we are not going digital um, as a cosmetic change. So we are not doing digital. We are aspiring to be digital. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with a lot of ways of working that need to change within the organization, the structure of the organization, the roles and responsibilities, the competencies, competencies and skills. It all needs to kind of change. So for the shareholder, it was important to put it, put it in perspective of numbers over five years of how we are going to change this model of business from being purely, uh, purely mobile driven to other services that we plan to build and create hyper-personalized services for our customers so that we are able to increase our customer lifetime value. Uh, and how does that customer lifetime value then drive uh, our growth, uh, both at the top line level and at the EBITDA and EBIT level? Uh, so that, was, that was the story we packaged for, for five years and, and, and uh, got shareholder approval. And just before I bring Nick, can you just give us an idea of the scale of the transformation in terms of the, the, the people transformation and the technology transformation, just to add some, some color, I guess, around what you've been saying. Okay, so we, uh, we had in our IT uh, stack, as we call it, the old IT stack, we had close to 300 applications. We are now, now running with 30 applications. And all these 30 applications are all cloud native. So we were probably only 10% in cloud when we were in the old IT stack on the new digital platform, yeah. we had 92% in cloud. Yeah. Um, wow. We had over, over 200 databases that sat in different pockets in this IT yeah. stack, the old uh, modular IT stack that we had built over many years. Uh, in the new digital platform, we have one data lake. Uh, and, you know, and, and so that's the scale of transformation from a, from a technology yeah. perspective. Yeah. Um, from people perspective, it, it's huge. I mean, the cultural change that we need to bring in because we are now thinking digital. We are, uh, the products and services that we create are so customer centric that we don't see what we can do from technology point of view first. We actually see what the customer wants and then build it backwards because we know that our, that our infrastructure and our platform will be able to deliver uh, all that the customer needs uh, in a faster and more cost-effective manner. Um, so clearly, um, you know, the, the structure that we have now created in the digital platform, just to give you a perspective again, uh, today, the kind of hyper-personalization that we've built on our, on our website, we can actually technically, mathematically, uh, have 6 million combinations, permutations and combinations of plans um, that can be built over a slide of a finger. 
so you you started this by saying there's 6 million people in singapore so technically we can have a plan for each one singaporean uh, on our on our digital platform it's as customized as that uh, and we haven't even started yet on other services that we plan to build into this platform to give a far more holistic uh, experience to our customers going forward so that's the scale really what we are talking about so, so so thank you so it's a pretty big scale so so so, so nick i know that you spend a lot of your time speaking to TM Forum members about the transformation programs. And when you look at what M1 has done, how do you compare how M1 has gone about its transformation with what you're seeing from other operators? Thanks, Mark. I think it's only to be applauded what M1 are doing. And I just want to echo what, what Man has said there in terms of the key lesson we've learned from looking at many transformations around the world is the importance of the whole company coming on that journey. All too often, these uh, transformations that get framed as digital become about network or IT transformation. And much as that is an integral part of it, when you break it down, what's IT there for? It's there to automate and build out processes that humans support. So if you're not taking the whole company on that journey, it doesn't actually result in the kind of transformation we're looking for. I could count on one hand the number of full stack transformations that are actually successful. It's an extremely bold move. Uh, on one hand, I think you can say that at the kind of scale of M1, that's perhaps a little easier. But if we look into most operators around the world, you can multiply their size by the number of systems. So Man mentioned they're going from 300 systems. You look at an operator 10 times the size, they'll have 3,000 systems. And typically those systems have a legacy that goes back over 20 years. So we're talking about not only technology, but software, skills, mindset, and an approach that has deep roots into a company. And the, taking the kind of bold move that M1 has done to say, look, this isn't just about IT, this is about the whole company coming on that journey is, is key. What I think is also fascinating about the M1 story is, on one hand saying we need to simplify and improve and, and allow ourselves to be much more agile as a business, but not expecting that the customers will want the same level of simplicity. So quite often there's a big push rightly to simplify the number of packages and products out there in the market, which have grown up over years, but there's not sufficient focus on what the customer actually wants. And in today's market, that is hyper-personalization. And that is the kind of ability, as Man says, is a wonderful uh, coincidence, I'm sure, but having the ability for every person in Singapore to have their own personalized plan is the kind of level we would need to get to for B2C and B2B as well in the future. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. That's, uh, that's very interesting. And, and Roger, if I can just, just turn to you. Um, I know that, that you work with many operators around the world with their transformation programs. What have been the keys to success in terms of you know, working, uh, being on this journey with M1? Thanks, Mark. Uh, first of all, it's great to interact with you along with uh, Man and Nick. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, Man and M1 leadership uh, to embark on a bold, company-wide transformation and to create first of its kind digital native telco. M1 transformation is business-led and technology enabled, touching every aspect of the company, as Man mentioned, which is the most exciting part. Telcos are the digital fabric of the society, and Infosys strategy for communication industry has four key aspects. One is cost takeout, digitization, reimagination, and top line growth for our customers. Our partnership with M1 started early 2020 and touches upon each of these aspects. Uh, as Man mentioned, cost takeout uh, is extremely important with huge legacy around. It touches upon aspects around infrastructure, application, network, people, experience, process. For example, in M1, we consolidated the entire legacy assets to single hyper cloud to sweat out the investment in legacy and are driving ongoing efficiencies. On digital transformation, as Nick mentioned, there are many where we are involved who are in evolved strategy, very few who completely look at a new stack and in most places, the platform is based on TMF open digital architecture, which is essential for integrating the best of breed software packages and to enable the process transformation with zero touch provisioning and hyper personalization, which is what the end customers want. So we bring accelerators and assets like Infosys Cobalt. Uh, Infosys Cobalt is a set of services solutions platform, which acts as a bolt on force multiplier for cloud powered enterprise transformation. Specific to M1, 
the key success factor for our execution and partnership are one, the clear and bold vision to transform. This is communicated and embraced by all involved in this journey. Second, the people involved in this program, they are at the heart and center of it uh, to go beyond their duties, uh, both from M1 and Infosys to achieve the outcomes, especially am amidst the COVID challenges, which is remarkable. And third, extremely important, enablement and empowerment. This brings about the agility and scale, which is required. So it's, it's a great journey so far, Mark. Excellent, good, glad to hear it. So, man, if I can just come back to you, I, I mentioned before that you've launched these new flexi plans, and I, I, that seems to me to be maybe the first manifestation of what you've achieved. What else can your customers expect from you over the next one to two years that will be directly off the back of your transformation and what you can do? Mark, before I get there, I just want to quickly uh, uh, remark on what Raja said. I think uh, it was quite interesting that we started our transformation before COVID hit us. Um, and uh, and uh, when we started our transformation, it was all planned to be on show here in Singapore with Infosys. And, uh, you know, it was more expected ways of working. Um, and with COVID, everything was completely thrown out of gear. And, and I must say that I must appreciate that Infosys really brought their strength to the table. And uh, we started working with their offshore teams uh, in India. And I think it's been a tough but great journey. So thank you very much to Infosys, Raja uh, in, uh, in Australia, who's been heading this, Bali in India, Kamlesh, who's here in Singapore, uh, and the other team members. I think they've done a tremendous job uh, in helping us move through these really, really tough times. Uh, so thank you very much on that. I, and to your question, I think, um, you know, uh, to be honest, there is a lot in our stable right now. Um, we, need to, uh, we need to build this platform, create quality around it, make sure that it performs to its, uh, to its um, expected levels uh, and get the customer experience really um, at, 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 at its peak. And then the idea is to start involving um, other services uh, which we can build on top of uh, our platform, uh, like content, uh, like um, gaming, um, or financial services with 5Gs, uh, you know, AR, VR, and so on and so forth. So the idea is to keep building these services, but not just as a service, but like I said, to hyper-personalize it uh, to each and every customer, the way they use it today, uh, and how uh, we would be able to make it more contextual and meaningful for the customers to use. So the idea is to build these services onto the platform and then be able to hyper-personalize it going forward. Um, so that's what the platform is designed to do in real time virtually uh, to be able to create these services on the fly uh, and, be, and be very contextual. So that's, that's the aim and I think we are getting there. Um, like I said, a transformation is not a technology journey, it's an organizational journey. Uh, so for us, uh, a lot of time uh, that I'm spending on is to make sure that the team is committed behind this. Uh, we are going through our, uh, going through our uh, ways of work, working um, um, coaches and you know, agile coaches around in the organization to create teams and tribes and squads and, and so on and so forth. So a lot of time is being spent in learning the ways of digital working as well and then applying them and making sure that uh, the organization is future ready. Yeah. And and I know you referred to this and Nick referred back to it as well, which is this idea of this customer centricity and the data driven nature of what you're doing. So, I mean, from what I'm hearing, it is the use of data insights and personalization, which is at the heart of everything that you've done. That's the real core of what you're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, um, so I think in terms of the benefits around that, the benefits, I guess, are mainly in terms of your being able to as Nick says, hyper-personalize, but I guess that also helps other parts of the business as well. Look, at the end of the day, we all know that the yields are continuously dropping. I mean, telcos are giving higher and higher data and lower and lower prices. So how do you maintain your ARPUs? How do you make sure that your churn is under control and how do you increase uh, and reduce your cost to serve and therefore impacting your customer lifetime value? Um, so the game is primarily increasing customer lifetime value. Uh, and therefore, the reality is the customers are also getting more and more digital. They are looking for services. We have a fantastic relationship with our customers built over many decades. We have information. 
So why shouldn't we be the one providing those services to our customers and build our relationship further uh, with hyper-personalized services? So the, the, the heart of this is customer lifetime value. Yeah. So it's very inspiring. We've had to say, Nick and I often get asked, you know, what are the real success stories? And it's nice to, to have one now. So, man, congratulations for your, for your boldness. Well done for the, for the Infosys team for seeing, for seeing you through the project. And um, thanks, everybody, for their time today. Speak to you all again soon. Thank you Bye -bye. very much. Thank thanks, you. Mark. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Roger. Thanks.